Hello everybody, this is Lilla in La Hawaii and I'm making fairy beads today and finishing off some I started before and thought I would just turn the camera on while I'm doing it probably making a mess as usual Anyway, fairy beads are fabric beads and there really are three steps to them You have to dye the fabric first or paint it So I have a bunch here of fabrics that I've gone ahead and they're just muslin or cotton cotton sheet actually most of them they work pretty well and then once I've painted it I paint it with watercolors and once it's painted I tear it into strips so for example here's a strip I like this color actually I know it's a grungy color and the strips are usually about one inch wide and three inches long so that's one and maybe I'll tear one other to show you. Okay, let's see. Here's a piece. One inch wide, three inches long. And the way I do it is the same as all of beads, really. I have some Elmer's glue here. And my method is really quite, quite simple. These ones I've just glittered so they're ready to go off actually I won't put them off for a minute and then these have been wound and they're ready to be glittered but I'll take them off I use skewers to put them on the, you know barbecue for shish kebab or something Ooh, that's blowing that away so the way I do it is I take the hand dyed fabric and as I said, it should no, be no longer than three inches. And what I want to do is fold it over. And I don't want it to stick to the skewer. So I put a little line of glue about oh, that far down. I wouldn't say it's a line, it's a glob of glue. Just to make sure that I haven't stuck that to the skewer. And then I... All the rest of it is just wound. And it does make a fairly thick, nice bead. And then at the end, to seal it, I'd put a little dab of glue. There I have it glued. And that's ready for glittering. And usually when I've done that, sometimes I need to put a little bit more on, just on the end here. Heck, that could be a bit too much. And then to make sure it's sort of distributed evenly, I always roll it like that. So once it's rolled, it's ready to be glittered. And I find it really is easiest to glitter it if it's on the skewer still but of course you can do it either way and I have a salt shaker here with my mixture of glitter and I put different kinds of uh, silver glitter in there some sort of iridescent and some not and I've had that for years and I keep sort of adding to it it's a mixture and I put that like that and just to make sure it's all over I think what I'm going to do is sometimes you miss a part. See, I've missed a part there. So that's where the old brush comes in. So right there it needs some more. And then since I've got it on this it's like butcher paper I just roll it like that and there it is. And I don't know whether you can see the sparkles, but it really is pretty. So I'll just take that right off and let it dry. Now these are all ready to be glittered. This bunch over here. And then I was just going to show you with some of the things. I wanted to make a tassel for this. This is not the tassel, but I just threaded them onto this to show you. This is one of my painted fabric books that I'm working on. And I'll make a hanger with these beads when they're as I said they're um, 
good one inch wide but when they're dry I cut them in half I don't like them so long so like these could be chopped in half instead of three I'll have six out of that so those kind of match I'm trying to get them to coordinate so this is the same painted fabric except I have added some glitter to it so it's not finished yet but this is working on it and I will be adding as I said I'll be adding some more things to it but these are particularly good for that for that color there and then also I embroidered a piece of linen here a pocket it is and I was choosing some beads to go with it and I think those would be nice so I'll be putting some glitter on those those are apricots and like a like a maize color so I'll do one more so you can see what I do I didn't want to make this too long because I know it when people get bored if they have to watch anything too long so anyway here it goes that's that's exactly where I want it so I make sure that I lift this up See if I can do it without getting my hands all messy this time. Okay, so I've glued that down now. It's not stuck. It's just there. And I'm going to roll it right to the end. And before I get to the end, I'm going to put this on. Of course, you can bead these. And some of them I have beaded. I'm not showing those today. I thought I'd just show you the glitter ones because I like those. But anyway, that's that's already done. And I just have to roll it like this. Sort of distributes the glue evenly. And then I think I'll do the whole thing with some glitter before I finish this. So I'm going to paint it on the outside with Elmer's glue. Just glue all it is, Elmer's glue all. And then I've got some butcher paper with the glitter. I should do it this way. And I usually pick it up and make a little trough. So there it is. Now I'll take that off. I'll show you uh, these are dried they get quite hard when they're dry not totally hard but a lot harder than you'd think so this one you know it's pretty hard so I'm going to glitter it this one I made yesterday and the purpose of using this and making a trough is I can pick up the remnants and put back when I'm through so I don't don't waste any of course you could use colored glitter that would be lovely too in fact I usually would use pink glitter I've got a sort of a pinky salmon and I don't have that out at the moment I've kind of put it somewhere and I'm not quite sure where so I'll look for that later but anyway, that's another one. So, let me thread them back on here to let them dry. So those are drying. Um, I'll put those there. Now these ones should be pretty dry. Let me put that there. This should be pretty dry, and because I don't like the size of them, I like to roll them this way because it's easier, but it, I must say, it is rather tricky cutting them, but here I go, I'm going to try and cut it in half. Oh, and you see that is hard to cut, and of course you've squished it a little bit, but not to worry, so I keep them in there. So that's them. Those are the ones I just made. So there you are. You see, these 
Yeah, these can be cut in half. These are already done. There. These are not ready to be cut because they're still soft. And this one, I love this sort of, this is kind of a lavender sky blue, pale blue. And let me show you, um, if I have painted a stripe like this, what I would do is I would, let's see, what color? I think I could use some more pink. So normally what I would do is I would tear off a piece. And I don't like to tear off the whole strip because you never know, I may need it for something else. But I do want about three inches and I always sort of just wing it. This does get a little bit stiff with some of the paint and, and just depends on what sheet, old sheet I used. So here we go, I'll just do, I like the little frayed edge, so I'm gonna have that show. Actually, I think I could do that. Do both ends at the same time to save time. Okay, so there we go. So it's that easy. Anyone can do them. They're so easy. This the step's not necessary, but I like to roll it. Sort of just smooths it. Smooths the end. So there it is. All ready to be glittered. Now I can, it's still, um, you know, a little bit soft. And I have to be careful I haven't glued it to the stick. So I usually give it a little bit more of a... A twist, yeah, it's okay. And then I can put some more on the outside of the glue, just using up the last of it. And sometimes I just sprinkle it on like that. And that way it doesn't have quite as much on it, maybe. The other way it puts more on it, but that's quite pretty in my opinion. So I'll let that dry and then I'll be cutting them in half. So that's pretty. I'll just leave that like that. Let me see. So I showed you this. So see how these, oh, see how these match. And I will be putting a little glitter on them, cutting them in half, and then I'll be sewing them onto this. So that'll be nice. And then I just threaded some onto this ribbon just to show you. Of course, it's not going to stay on that, but that'll be making a tassel. And I will be putting three or four on a tassel and some fibers and uh, embroidery floss to make the tassel that hangs off. You know, I'm going to probably do it along the spine of the book. So I think that'll look nice. And this fabric definitely matches it. And it's the same principle. It's an um, old bed sheet, and I just painted it. Watercolor paints. And here it is. Just just the beginnings of it. I've already sold one of these. And pe people seem to like the painted fabric. So that's that. And I do have another piece of painted fabric that I just finished so I can show you if you come over to my studio and stay still long enough, you'll probably get painted because I love to paint pretty much everything. So this is some other fabric that I painted recently, just a few days ago actually. And uh, this time when I painted it, I don't know whether you can see, but I did put the stripes going that way. Now I could use this, instead of using it for a book, I could use it for the beads. So fairy beads, fairy beads. 
So fairy beds everywhere. And I'll put those there. Fairy beds. Look at that. So there they are. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you could hear the piano playing in the background. It's very soothing on a Sunday afternoon. Just gentle practice. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.